In 1755, a group of Plains Cree people led explorer Anthony Henday west from the Hudson's Bay to the area of modern-day Edmonton, where indigenous people had lived for over 8,000 years. People would travel to the region from great distances to trade, to celebrate, and to worship. By 1795, the Hudson's Bay Company had established the most important fur trading post in the West. The region quickly attracted farmers and merchants from all over the world. In 1905, Edmonton would be named the capital city of Alberta. Then, in 1915, in the shadow of the recently completed legislature, the old fort was dismantled for the last time. For the next 50 years, various efforts were made to preserve the memory of the old fort. Despite these efforts, no workable proposal was ever fully embraced. But on the eve of Canada's centennial, things were about to change. In 1966, the Rotary Club of Edmonton was celebrating the club's 50th anniversary. Longtime Rotarian and club founder Sam Dixon suggested that the club do something to establish a memorial of Fort Edmonton. Rotary's membership agreed. July 9, 1967, a special ceremony was held in dedication of Fort Edmonton. A time capsule was buried, and 93-year-old Sam Dixon unveiled a rotary sign. Based on plans from 1846, construction of the new fort began. It was determined from the outset that the fort be as authentic and historically accurate as possible. Led by legendary axeman Felix Belrose, expert craftsmen would build the fort using traditional methods and tools. Horse and tackle were used to erect walls. Métis from the region managed the horses. It was truly a cooperative effort. In 1969, a group of civic leaders led by Rotarian Merrill Wolfe established the Fort Edmonton Foundation. This charity financed the reconstruction of the fort as well as most of the other historical elements within the park. By the time Fort Edmonton Park officially opened to the public in 1974, the fort itself was complete and paid for. The Fort Edmonton Foundation and community members have contributed funding, resources, and expertise to many projects within the park. Of note are the Blatchford Field Hangar, the iconic steam railroad and railway station, the Hotel Selkirk, several churches, the Henderson Round Barn, and the Johnny J. Jones Midway. To see the park today, one truly appreciates the volunteer efforts of the Foundation. Fort Edmonton Park is where Edmonton's colorful history comes to life. It tells the story of how indigenous peoples and new immigrants came together and built a vibrant, thriving community here. The park offers us a unique experience and the opportunity to interact with storytellers, knowledgeable interpreters, and live entertainers in authentic period costume. Visitors from around the world step back in time to sense and experience firsthand the fur trading era and the challenges of building a commercially and culturally vibrant city. The park's development has been guided by a series of master plans. The City of Edmonton's 2010 master plan lays out an ambitious path for the future of Fort Edmonton Park. Visitors will enter the park via a new front gate and guest services area that will present a welcoming first impression. The train station will be repurposed as an interpretive space portraying the significance of the railway to Edmonton's early development. Young and old will experience the carnival atmosphere of an authentic 1920-style midway, including rides, entertainment, and food from the era. New attractions will include a walk-through maze, a cabinet of curios, 
a bigger Ferris wheel, and a new special events tent. The Hotel Selkirk expansion will include a 250-person ballroom, an expanded lobby, and new larger guest rooms while maintaining the look and feel of the 1920s. A facade representing Jasper Avenue's historic Windsor and Albion blocks will fill the space between the existing hotel and the Capitol Theater on 1920 Street. The Indigenous Peoples Experience is the signature exhibit of the new expansion plan. It recreates the meeting place of Indigenous peoples both before and after the arrival of the first explorers. The exhibit is being designed in collaboration with the Confederacy of Treaty Six First Nations and the Métis Nation of Alberta. It will be presented in a fun, respectful, and inclusive way. Their stories will be shared their way through multimedia shows, personal storytelling, and hands-on opportunities. It will be the first exhibit of its kind in North America, recognizing the contribution of Indigenous people to the Edmonton area, Alberta, and Canada. All orders of government have contributed generously to this project. Led by the Ford Edmonton Foundation, it is truly a community-driven effort. Like Sam Dixon over 50 years ago, Edmontonians understand the importance of preserving the colorful history of their city. It took 50 years to get the reconstruction of the fort off the ground. Another 50 years of hard work and passion to create this citizen's project, this great gathering place that we are proud to share with one and all. There are many more stories to tell. Over the years, Many donors have generously contributed to the Ford Edmonton Foundation. Without their substantial donations and continuing support, this incredible place we call Ford Edmonton Park would not exist. Thank you.